Hello and welcome to another episode of Socialistic Social Media Agency Stories. My name is Jason Yormark, Chief Social Officer at Socialistics, but more importantly, podcast enthusiast. And I am really excited about our guest today. His name is Luke Hyde. Uh, he is an agency owner and his agency is Drive Digital Advertising, but that's not what's interesting about Luke. What's interesting is that Luke is only 19 years old and has a successful agency. And I'm very envious of his finding his way much earlier in his life than I did when it comes to this sort of thing. So I uh, I'm really excited to learn how he pulled this off and what that is looking like for him. Luke, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, really looking forward to uh, hopefully sharing some insight with your audience. Yeah, well, let's let's just get right to my biggest question is, and actually, you know what? Let's start with your journey. Like, tell me how, okay, you're 19 years old. I'm assuming you went to high school and you graduated. I, t- I want to know your story. Like, tell me how, sure. where, where did it start? And then where are you at? And, and how'd you get there? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I had not really a crazy start. I, I wasn't always wanting to be an entrepreneur. I didn't always want to have my digital marketing agency, but I did want to have an impact in the world. And I thought I might as well start younger because, you know, the sooner I start, the more opportunities I have to grow and learn, make mistakes and and keep learning from there. So I thought, okay, at a young age, you know, what can I do to maybe have this positive impact to make, you know, a name for myself? So about two years ago, I was a janitor. And while I was sweeping, mopping the floors, I would listen to podcasts, actually. Hmm. And I started listening to podcasts about, you know, how to make money, like investing, you know, investing in the stock market, real estate investing, and eventually found a podcast by Amy Porterfield called the um, Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. And uh, I just fell in love with the topic of online marketing. Uh, All of, you know, everything that goes into it, I just was fascinated by it kind of unlike everything in school. I mean, you know, I did very well in high school. Um, I was the salutatorian of my class, which was pretty cool, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to pursue outside of it. I wasn't sure if it was, everybody was like, Hey Luke, you should be a doctor. You should be a lawyer. You should, you know, do this. And I was like, "Ah, you know, I I don't know if I want to do that. So once I found online marketing, I didn't even realize that there were honestly agencies like this. I just thought it was cool. So I actually started posting about um, online marketing. I made a kind of like a personal brand page on Instagram, posted about online marketing. And within six months, I had grown that page to about 20,000 followers. And that's actually where I got my first people reaching out to me and saying, hey, Luke, it looks like you know what you're talking about. Could you help me with X marketing problem? And I was like, oh, wow, there's actually a market of people who are willing to pay for the knowledge and the services that I'm kind of learning about. So from there, it really just snowballed. I just started learning more, getting more practice. And uh, this is kind of an interesting part of my story is that at that point, I started you know, this Instagram and I actually had a different business. I started an, uh, an LLC and everything around my Instagram, but come to find out that I got an email one day saying, hey, you are actually violating a trademark. I, your name is something that I have trademarked. And I was like, oh, geez, you know, like, and, and I, it was weird because it wasn't a super official email. And I was like, is this even legit? It was a weekend. So I was like, okay, I'll just let it slide. You know, I'll talk to maybe a lawyer on Monday to see if there's any validity to it. Next day, though, I tried to log into my Instagram and it said, your account has been reported. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So everything was gone. That's when I really freaked out. I emailed this guy. I said, Hey, you know, I'm an 18 year old kid. I didn't mean to do this. You know, can you retract your you know, report? I can change everything, you know, cause my content wasn't like associated with the name. It was just, you know, a name I had. And I'm pretty sure you probably know changing a name on Instagram is really easy. And that's yeah. what I told the guy. And at this point, everybody I dealt with in the marketing community was pretty nice. So I thought he'd be you know, willing to work with me. But I got a straight up answer of, sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. (laughs) So everything was lost. And I kind of was at a point where, do I want to pursue, you know, do I want to keep doing this? And it was at that point, I was like, hey, 
it's something I like. And I kind of honestly wanted to show this dude, show everybody that I could build something even better than I, what I had in the past. So that's when I started drive digital advertising. Um, so I, you know, started just again, kind of from scratch, getting clients, um, doing all different types of online marketing things. And eventually, you know, we just grew, uh, recently we've had the opportunity to actually work with, uh, my local county government where the local businesses got grants to fund some online marketing efforts that were to be performed by certain marketing vendors. So my company applied to be a vendor for this program. We had to go through this whole vetting process um, and then we got approved. And that's what kind of we were doing at the end of last year was helping these local businesses uh, with spending this grant money, which was really cool because pretty much every business I had worked with would not have had the money to work with us otherwise. So that was really cool. And that's kind of where we're at today. Gotcha. So this is a full-time gig for you. Are you going to, I mean, are you going to college or school? Are you taking classes? Yeah. So or? I, I, like I said, I, I did pretty well in high school, so I got a full ride scholarship to college. So I actually am still a full-time college student. Okay. Um, but I would definitely like to say that I'm a college student on the side and sure. an agency owner full-time. So Man, that's awesome. So Thank tell you. me a little bit more about your agency. Is it just, is it just you? Do you have part-time employees, contractors, you have a team. Tell me a little bit more. Yeah. About so it's have. right now it is me and a bunch of contractors pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, I don't have any full-time or part-time like employees, sure. but I do have people who help me overseas. Also in Michigan, I actually, where I'm from, uh, I have some made some local connections of people who help me out. So for a while it was just me, but, um, about the last six months, I started kind of growing that team and, and, uh, they're all really reliable. I, I've, really enjoyed working with everybody so far. So we do, I mean, we're a full service marketing agency. So we yeah. do web development, search engine optimization, Facebook ads, Google ads, mm -hmm. kind of a one-stop shop, but we do like to focus on small to medium sized businesses. Yeah. Um, and that's where personally, I just like to, to have the biggest impact. Gotcha. How many clients are you guys managing currently? So right now we have about, I'd say about 20. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I'm actually kind of shifting. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about this, what I'm going to be sure. doing in the next year, but, um, this year uh, is kind of one, I want to push, you know, Luke Hyde, my story a little bit more, but yeah. I also want to have a bigger impact. And, you know, as an agency without growing my team a lot, I'm not going to be able to help many more people, many more mm -hmm. small businesses than I am right now. Yeah. So I'm actually putting together a online marketing program that's tailored to help small businesses learn how to grow using online marketing without mm -hmm. spending a lot of money or, you know, time or having a lot of technical experience. So that's something I'm really going to be trying to uh, work on this year and, and expand into. Gotcha. No, that's awesome. What, uh, so what's been your, what's been successful for you? So obviously you're juggling a lot of things. What's been uh, kind of your recipe for getting clients? Cause I think a lot of, you know, a good portion of who listens to this is either, you know, beginning agency owners or people that are thinking about going down that path. And that's always the kind of the big question is how, you know, how do I get clients, especially in the beginning? So I'm kind of curious what, what you, what you have done and what you currently do, what's been successful for you in terms of, of, you know, bringing clients on. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, I think being a young person, I definitely have had some disadvantages to getting sure. clients because yeah. people are like, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to work with this guy, <laughs> right. even though I might have all the skills in the world just because I'm a young person. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, my approach was, you know, maybe a little bit different, but I think these are all strategies that I would recommend anybody to do when they're starting out. So one thing that I did that I think was really helpful, and I don't know a lot of people talk about is actually, you know, maybe don't go right into cold calling, cold emailing, all that stuff. Reach out to your warm leads, I guess you could say, your, your network you already have. So for example, my dad was a, well, he is a graphic designer. So I told him and he was really excited for me. So he actually told some of his clients, hey, my son is starting to get into digital marketing. You know, is there any way that you could have him help you out with something. So sure. I started doing a couple of things for free for them and then eventually turned into kind of some paying gigs. So really I would advise just telling everybody and anyone that, you know, Hey, this is what I do. 
Is there any way that I could help you out? And again, you know, doing things for a lower cost in the beginning and building your reputation and expertise from there is definitely something I had to do so that I could break through the the trust barrier of, oh, I don't know if I want to work with a, you know, an 18 or 19 year old. But now that I've gotten enough people to, you know, say, oh yeah, Luke and Drive Digital Advertising is a good company. Now it's a lot easier to, to get clients. Yeah. So right no, now. That's, that's, no, go ahead. Keep going. Oh, no, no, no. I was just going to say now um, we, I, you know, I attend networking meetings. Um, I do have some people that do like some, some cold emailing, cold calling and stuff for me. Um, I'm just not as big of a fan of those, but they definitely work. So, yeah, I love that. One of the things I learned in my journey as an agency owner is that sometimes what you think is a weakness is actually a strength, right? And being authentic and embracing what makes you and or your business unique um, is a good thing. Like for me, I always thought when we were just starting out, like we're small, I need to make it look like we're bigger. Like we need an address. So it looks like we have a big office. You know, I need to have a bunch of people on my about us page. So we look like a bigger agency so that clients will hire us. And I always felt like I always needed to make us look bigger than what we were. But what I realized over the course of that first year in business is that most of the clients that decided to work with us liked the idea of working with a smaller agency because they didn't want to work with a big agency. They want to work with a smaller agency that's hung, that's hungrier, has more hunger in what they're doing and that they have access to me as the owner and, and not, you know, in some sea of hundreds of employees. And when that, I realized that like we embraced who we are, you know, we embraced our smallness. We embraced how we could move quickly and adjust and be more creative and, and just fight for our clients more so than larger agencies might. So I'm sure you've already done this already, but like, I think what you're doing is amazing. Like this 19 year old kid who has started an agency and, and built a successful agency, obviously, you know what you're doing. Obviously, you know, you, it, that that's your, that's your story. Like that's, what's unique. Like I would embrace that. And then if anybody yeah. ever said, Hey, I'm a little uncertain about working with you because you know, you're only 19. I mean, you can, you can back it up. I would say, actually, that's a strength, and here's why, and, yeah, and here's why that's unique. So I, you know, I think that that's awesome, and, and you should continue to to go down that path and, and leverage that throughout, um, you know, the growth of your agency. Um, that's a cool thing. I mean, I was I was it was appealing to me when I first kind of saw your story. Thank you. Yeah, and I honestly have kind of done the same thing, um, kind of like with a smaller, you know. That is one of the things that we push is we are a smaller team. So it's easier, yeah. you know, you can have direct access to me at certain times and everything, which people like, and kind of like what you said, I, I definitely do use, uh, I like to say I use my youth to my advantage. Right. And, yeah. you know, when I'm working with these small business owners, a lot of people, you know, I tell them like, Hey, you know, I grew up using social media. I grew up using yep. online. I mean, this has been in my world. So, you know, throw out maybe all of my other case studies and testimonials, the likelihood that I'm going to know what I'm talking about is a little bit higher because, you know, I, it's, it's yeah. what I grew up with. And that's what a lot of people like actually as well. No, that's awesome. What, uh, so what, I mean, you mentioned, you talked a little bit about kind of what you're working towards. Do you, is that just, is it, it sounded like what you were saying is you, you kind of wanted to create education for businesses to kind of fish for themselves and, and maybe not need an agency. Am I understanding that correctly? And if so, is that just going to be kind of a, a component of what you do and you all, you kind of see yourself as being in the agency space for a longer period of time? I'm just kind of curious, kind of what you're outside of finishing college, like what, what your, uh, maybe your five-year plan is with what you've built. Yeah, so I definitely want to kind of create levels because I think obviously not every business is at the same point. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I've been able to work with a lot of people who didn't have, you know, normally wouldn't have had the money. So mm -hmm. I think there's kind of a disparity between businesses that have the money and need digital marketing. So they hire, a, you know, they hire a, a, a company like Drive Digital Advertising. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of small businesses who, obviously still need digital marketing, but they don't have the budget to do it, but they do have the time or they have somebody on their team. So I'm kind of want to create kind of three levels. The first would be a program for them to learn how to do it themselves. And there's going to kind of be a second tier where it's maybe like sort of coaching, uh, helping them through it, like done with you sort of. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And then I am still going to have um, the agency for those businesses that, again, need digital marketing and have the budget to uh, to do that. So that's how I hopefully will maximize the impact I'm going to be able to make. Um, My really lifelong goal is to make as big of a positive impact, um, you know, in this world as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's been really cool so far. And I'm I'm looking forward to to continuing down that that road. That's awesome. What? what are the uh, biggest challenges that you're facing right now with, with 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 this agency? Like, what are the things that keep you up at night, or just kind of the biggest things that you're facing to uh, you know continue to be successful with it? Oh, sure. Um, I mean, you know, uh, I still, you know, to the day to this day, kind of struggle a little bit with you know, sort of like imposter syndrome. You know, mm-hmm. I'll, ha- I'll have days where you know certain campaigns aren't running as well, and then I'll get thoughts and you know, Hey, maybe doing this at 19 wasn't such a good idea or whatever. So I'm, you know, I'm constantly fighting that. Uh, definitely it's a lot, you know, it's not as bad as it was when I was beginning, you know, um, I'm going to be, I I have so many more case studies. So I I know that what I'm doing is helping people, which makes it easier. And then obviously, you know, getting new clients is, you know, a constant battle as well. However, you know, that's eased up as well. So really the, the biggest, you know, I guess challenge for me is just pushing this new product. Um, cause I've kind of had to do, you know, again, start from scratch, um, you know, learn and do some more market research, figure out exactly what these business owners are looking at, looking for, and then, um, you know, really putting it out uh, in a whole new way is, is what I've been dealing with recently. Gotcha. If you had to, uh, if somebody was listening and they were thinking of starting an agency, what, What are the things that stand out for you that you would advise somebody like, don't do this. This is a huge mistake that I made, or I did this and this was the best thing that I ever did. You know, what are some of the points of advice that you would give somebody to kind of set themselves up for success? Sure. Um, so I actually, uh, I've done a couple speeches and I want to do more public speaking. And Mm -hmm. one of the speeches I give is centered around this acronym I created. Um, and it's still a word, but it's like OPA. Mm -hmm. Um, so it stands for opportunity, perseverance, and adaptability. Now, these are things that I I give this speech to like high school students, college kids, but it's also applicable to people who want to start an agency. So basically opportunity, um, is when you're starting out a business, you really need to look for as many opportunities as possible because they're not probably going to be coming to you. You're going to have to actually make those opportunities. You can't just wait for the door to open. You have to build the door and then you can open it. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely encourage people to be proactive and, and look for those opportunities. Then perseverance is, you know, dealing with rejection, persevering through tough times. When you're starting your own agency, there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, I know I sure definitely had a lot of that. I'm sure you did as well. Um, but starting your own business isn't easy. And if you think it's going to be easy, then you're probably uh, not in the right field or you should at least change your mindset a little bit. So being able to persevere through the difficulties, I think, is what can really separate people and weed out those people who are really going to be successful with an agency. And the last one, A, stands for adaptability, which you know now every business has had to kind of adapt, especially with everything that's going on in the world. Excuse me. So in your own agency, you know, you have to adapt if, if, you know, perseverance can only really take you so far. I think if you keep, keep trying to do the same thing over and over and over again, and it's not working, then it probably isn't a good idea to keep doing it. You need to adapt and try different strategies and different things out. For example, uh, in the beginning, I, this is kind of an interesting story. I originally had drive digital advertising. Um, one, I like the word drive because I consider myself a very driven person. Uh, I, you know, very motivated, self-driven. But I do also really like cars, and I thought maybe working with the car dealership niche would be um, a way to, you know, I could make my agency the go-to agency for working with mm-hmm. car dealerships. Yep. So I picked a name that I thought would resonate with that audience: drive digital advertising. Mm -hmm. But I had one meeting with a car dealership, didn't go well. And since then I had called, you know, probably a hundred other dealerships and I just could not have good luck with dealerships. Mm -hmm. So instead of just continuing to try and do that, I was like, Hey, maybe I should adapt my business and, and try and go after different, 
you know, different industries, which is what I did and how I was able to, you know, have more success. Yeah. So yeah, that's really interesting. So we, um, I keep getting told time and time again from people that are, you know, bigger, smarter, been doing this for a lot longer that what, what's the saying they said they're saying they're, the riches is in the niches like you have to if you want in this day and age if you want to to run a successful agency for the most part you got to go down that path because everybody's doing that and it's going to get harder to land business when you're competing against agencies that specialize in you know particular industries um and it's it's there's some truth to it uh, there we you know, we lost out to uh, recently. There was a, you know, we've lost out to fashion opportunities because they went with, you know, boutique agencies that specialized in fashion, and it's it's pretty hard to compete with that, you know, despite your best efforts. And I was told, you know, there's money in everything. Pick something that you're passionate about or knowledgeable about. And we're kind of still trying to figure that out because we started three years ago, and you know, for the most part, of built a successful business, not niching out, you know, we specialize B2B social. So we kind of narrowed it down a little bit, but I think about that every night. Like I know if I pick a niche, we're going to be more efficient. We're not going to have to reinvent the wheel every time we get a new client. So we're going to be, our profit margins are going to go up. Sales process is going to be easier because, you know, when, if you're a niche industry or a niche agency, you know, there, you're going to have people's attention. It's going to get easier to open up doors. So there's a lot of benefits to it. But, you know, when you've gone down this path of of not doing that, it's hard to make that pivot. So I'm curious in in your world have, I mean, you're you're young, you're just starting out. You probably, you know, don't necessarily need to be thinking about this just yet, but I'm just curious to what extent have you, obviously you said, and that perfectly makes sense. You know, you try to go down that path of car dealerships, which honestly I could see why that would be, tough to do. That is, that is a tough industry to probably mm-hmm. try to navigate building an agency around. Um, but I'm just curious, have you thought about that? Is it in your plan to kind of narrow uh, into a niche-based approach? Or do you believe that you can do what you're doing and make it successful the way that it is? Yeah. So I actually did niche down at, at one point. So about mm-hmm. the beginning of 2020, uh, kind of crazy. We're already in 2021. Um, so the beginning of 2020, I went from dealing with, you know, pretty much everybody doing everything to only doing online advertising lead generation for people in the real estate industry. Okay. So I worked with real estate agents, loan officers, investors, and I did that for about six months. That was my main thing. But then I kind of just got a little tired of dealing with those type of people. And uh, I started getting other people just contacting me saying, Hey, you know, could you do this for me? And, and in the beginning I would turn it down because it was outside of that niche. And then eventually once the thing with real estate, I was kind of like, ah, you know, I don't know if I want, how long I want to do this. I started taking on more of those opportunities. So I went from, you know, doing that to online, just online advertising though, but for different types of businesses. Yeah. And then eventually it opened up even more where people were like, Hey, I like online advertising, but also do you do websites? And initially I was like, no, we don't do websites. And then it's like, mm-hmm. okay, that's a missed out opportunity. So then, you know, that's why we expanded into doing a, a more one-stop shop thing. Now I definitely think that I definitely do agree that uh, with that statement of being in a niche is a good idea. And I probably will want to go down there in the future. But like you said, I, you know, I, I personally think I have a little bit of time. I'm comfortable with where our agency is at. And really, um, with this program and everything, I, I the niche I'm kind of going after then is those small businesses who need online marketing but don't have the budget to do it, which I know is broad. But um, personally, are, are those are the people I'd like to help the most. So, you know, I'll probably pick one eventually. But I, yeah. it's got to – like you said, it's tough to go from – working with so many people to picking one because then you kind of have to shift a little bit. And then if it doesn't work out, you might have to shift again. And, and personally, I'm not the best at making like trying to pick drive digital advertising, the name that took a lot of time for me to figure (laughs) that out. So 
picking a picking a niche is a it's something I'm like, oh geez, that's gonna take a lot of work to figure out that just because I'm kind of indecisive about those type of things. But yeah. yeah. No, I read a great book. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's called I think a Profit Profit in the Deep End. I can't remember the name of the author off the top of my head, but it's basically it talks about all of this, basically about how, you know, why going in that direction makes sense. I don't think it's a definitive answer for everybody. I think it really just depends mm-hmm. on what your goals and objectives are, right? There's there to me, there's two paths in the agency game. Some people want it to be a lifestyle business. Some people just want success to them. There's a ceiling. I don't want it to be bigger than this because I just want it. I want to pay my bills. I want to live comfortably. You know, I want to, you know, I just want to have a lifestyle business that provides me the life that I want. I don't need to build some massive empire and make as much money as I possibly can. If that's the case, probably get away with not having to pick a niche. Mm-hmm. Um you know, if if your if your goal is to to you know build 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 build, then especially now, I think that the that the challenge now is anybody that's starting out now, everybody says they're a marketer. Everybody's starting an agency. There's so much competition, and a lot of it is crap. Like a lot of it, half of what I do on call initial calls with folks is talking them off the ledge. Because they had a terrible experience working with somebody that led them astray or didn't do what they okay. say they were going to do or overpromised and underdelivered. And I have to kind of like fight for marketing. Like I got to come and be like, no, marketing actually works when you find the right person or the right agency. And here's why. And here's what that looks yeah. like. So it's like coming in and cleaning that up. So there's so much competition. So what makes it hard is is cutting through the noise because now it's like, well, how do you drive qualified leads when there's everybody and their sister? is firing off LinkedIn messages and emails and, you know, blasting ads in front of you. Like the minute you even say the word marketing or agency or do a search on Google, now your feed uh, is all filled with ads for that, which obviously is going to get a little bit harder with um, the changes with iOS, but still, you know, people are just, there's so much noise. So it's really hard to cut through all that. So that's why we're looking really hard at niche because it helps cut through that noise. Cause if you've come in as an expert subject matter expert in that industry, it, it's just alleviates so much, but like you, it's like, you know, you've got this engine rolling and you're going down this path. It's like, you don't, you don't want to say no. If somebody says, I want to do business with you Well, you're not in my niche. Yeah. So hit the road. It's like, you don't want to do that. Right. So yeah. that, it's tough to do. So I, I can relate to that. Um, so I'm just natural curiosity. What are you studying in school? Um, is it related um, to it yeah, yeah. So um, the uh, it's it's marketing, digital right. marketing, um, kind of focused. But I mean, everything I've learned was before anything in school. I mean, the first digital marketing class that I've ever taken is actually this yeah. semester. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. Like yesterday, we had a thing where during class we went into the Google Keyword Planner. And um, we were on Zoom and we were doing a little group project where we had to do uh, some some keyword research, compile a keyword list. Mm -hmm. And I shared my screen. I was like, hey, guys, you know, I already have my own ad account. You know, I can do this. And people were like, oh, you really seem like you know your way around this. Like, have you taken a class before? And I'm like, oh, no, I I actually do this, you know, for my job, like for for a living. And they're like, oh, what do you mean? I was like, well, I run an agency. And they were they thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, so um, the best line you should have said there, because I so I went to school. I hated school. I barely got a degree. Um, the you should have said like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I've taken a class. It's, called, it's the best class you could possibly take. It's called real world experience. <laughs> that is a good one. That, that probably would have pissed the teacher off or the instructor off, though. Yeah, no, that's funny. I might have to do that sometime next time. <laughs> but yeah, so um, it's something you know. I mean, I think because I got such a good. I got such a good gig. Um, I mean, you know, I, my, my schooling's paid for my housing. Yeah. I'm in my apartment right now, my housing paid for. Yeah. So it's, it's really, there's not too many negatives to going, um, right. you know, and it takes a little bit of time, but with everything being like uh, online schooling now, um, yep. it doesn't take too much time. So yeah. I, I really am able to focus on my agency, which is, which is awesome. What have you, have you, so you, you mentioned uh, briefly before that you had, you have contractors that kind of, um, fuel your engine um who are they what do they do like i'm just kind of curious what kind of support system have you built around yourself for this to be successful because clearly you know you're getting pulled in and out of different things so i'm curious how how have you gone about building that and and what uh and what do they do for you yeah so it kind of just came down to i uh, i was just getting busier with what i or busier with myself and and mm-hmm. with my 
uh, all the work that was coming in. So I just started delegating tasks that weren't maybe the, my favorite thing to do. So for example, web design isn't my favorite thing to do. So as yeah. soon as I started getting a decent amount of website contracts, I was like, hey, I should find somebody who's really good at making a website. So I found somebody who I contract out and basically I know I pay him a certain amount to do certain website, you know, whether it's a website or just a part of a website. And he can do that for me in a really quick turnaround time. So that's been really nice. Um, same thing with graphic design. You know, if I need a logo for a client. Again, not really my specialty. So I found somebody who was good at it. They helped me with that. Um, and then the last thing is like with SEO. Um, again, something that's not my personal favorite thing to do. So I found um, another, they're actually a, a group in Michigan that uh, had been able to help me with that as well. So um, that's kind of what we've been able to do. And it's it's led to definitely some better results and taking, uh, it's been nice to not have to worry about all those different things, trying to get it all done myself. Yeah, no, I can, uh, I can relate. I'm I've started to delegate a lot and remove myself from things that I shouldn't be doing, especially as a, when you're growing your agency. Um, what, I mean, what, uh, what is your, what is your favorite thing about it? Like what, 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 like what's it, what excites you? Like what is the thing that excites you the most about what you do? Um, you know, out of all the categories, I would probably say like online advert, like just the advertising part of it yeah. is my favorite. But the thing that excites me the most is like the teaching aspect yep. of it, which is, that why I am going into doing more of this program sure. type mentoring type thing, because that's what I really am most passionate about. Um, because I, I still love talking to people about web design and SEO and stuff, but when it comes to actually doing it, it's like, eh, you know, I don't know if I want to yeah. do this all the time. So those are really the things that are, uh, that get me the most excited. So those are the things that I'm yeah. looking to focus on doing more well, in the future. You and I are cut from the same cloth. I can tell you that much. I, I mean, I because I made, I got actually got a master's degree in teaching because I thought I wanted to be a teacher. I coached high school volleyball. I'm like, I'm good at this. Maybe I'll be a teacher. And uh -huh. got my master's degree, and then I got into the classroom, and I'm like, this isn't the same as coaching sports. What have right, I done? Yeah. But that being said, you know, I've always probably very much like yourself. I love to teach. I love to help. I'm very big on. Um, you know, giving time and, and helping others. And, um, you know, I tried to run an agency five years ago and it, it didn't work out because I was learning and that the timing wasn't right. But um, I loved working with small businesses and, you know, we don't really, you know, small business is kind of a vague term. Some people think small business is like a million or more. Like, I'm like, no, small business is like the mom and pop shop on the corner yeah. you know, that can't afford, like you said, an agency per se. But I love, you know, every, 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 every once in a while, somebody contacts us and they need help and I know they can't afford us, but I'd love to be on the phone with them and just help them like at least answer some of their questions and help them not make a bad decision with somebody and help set realistic expectations. So I definitely mm -hmm. can relate to wanting to teach and to educate and to help. And that, that will bode you well, because if that's truly who you authentically are, people catch on that people clue, clue in on that. And even folks that don't work with you now, they remember that. And if maybe some, who knows, two years, three years later down the road, they're like, my business is three times as big now. Now I want to work with you. So mm -hmm. I could totally relate to that. I've always tried to figure out ways to kind of be helpful to others. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, definitely. It's something I, I do a similar thing. It, it, even if um, people can't, uh, at this point, you know, since I don't have the, um, the, the by the time this podcast goes live, I, I hopefully will have the course all up and running, cool. but, um, right now I'm still finishing it up. But, uh, if I do have clients well, potential clients that come in that don't have the money to work with us yet, I do try to do the same thing, offer them, offer them some advice to kind of push them in the right direction. Cause like you said, there definitely are a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, marketers, who sure. um, yeah. are kind of, uh, you know, taking advantage of these people, which is, no. you know, unfortunate to see. Yeah, I hate seeing that. So uh, good stuff. One other question. I asked everybody this. Uh, what's your favorite piece of technology, a tool, a gadget, maybe a book, something you watched? What's something that really stands out over the past couple of weeks that you just can't get enough of? Um, my favorite tool right now, I would say, is this tool called High Level. Um, mm -hmm. so it's like a, 
it, it started off with just like a CRM, but now, I mean, now they have so many different features. Um, they actually, I, I don't know if the official name is go high level or if it's just high level, but you can do things like at CRM, there's automatic follow-up campaigns, there's calendar features, funnel builder. It's really like an all-in-one marketing software. Yeah. And one of the coolest things is that you can actually white label it out so you can create your own like version of it. Uh, which is actually what I'm going to be doing for the course and, and in the future. So, very cool. My favorite. I figure I need to work in my own. Um, I always hated time tracking, so I've worked at a lot of different agencies, and they all were horrible when it came to time tracking. And I vowed when I start my own agency, we're not going to time track, which was a naive thought, especially as you scale and you get larger and you have eight, nine, ten people. Yeah, and. Uh, I came across a platform called Harvest and we've been using it. We tested it last week. We rolled it out this week. Um, that's really awesome. It's really lightweight. It's easy to use. And the team seems to be responding pretty well to it in terms of how easy it is to use as, as long as it's positioned the right way. And it's, you know, technology should make your life easier, not more difficult. And I definitely feel that's the case with that. So we've integrated that in just because I need to know, are we spending the right amount of time on clients? Are we charging the right amount? So piece of advice to any agency owner, maybe you don't need time tracking right away, but it's something that you're going to need to build into your world at some point. We seem to be doing it successfully. And this is coming from somebody that, like I said, despises it. So um, that's my that's my piece of technology for, for this episode. So yeah, cool. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. I don't know if you'll need it yet, but it's, it's pretty awesome. I like it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, Awesome. Well, is there anything that we didn't talk about today that you feel you want to throw out there before we wrap things up? Um, no, not really. Everything, um, you know, I think we covered a lot. It's been great. And, you know, I hope everybody enjoyed listening. Thanks again for having me on here. I guess the one thing I would say that we covered, you know, a little bit is just if you're starting an agency, no matter where you're at in your agency, I think it's important to if it's really something you want to do just to not give up because I think that's really what sets people apart is, you know, there's going to be roadblocks, there's going to be difficulties. And if you let those stop you, then you're really not going to get anywhere. And, you know, I've had a lot and I'm sure uh, everybody, you know, goes through different challenges, especially now, but there is a really big opportunity for online marketers, uh, agency owners, if they're doing it authentically, doing it the right way, actually providing, services for their clients because it's going to be, you know, businesses, you know, everybody's moving more online. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it was awesome having you, uh, really impressed by you. Uh, clearly I can tell that you're a smart dude and you are on a path to success. I'm, I'm jealous that I couldn't figure it out as, as early as you have. Uh, I'm sure you got plenty still to figure out, but you're a lot farther than, than I was at that age. So congrats to that. Uh, and Thank thanks a ton for, uh, for being on the show. Definitely. We'll be following you and looking uh, forward to following your, uh, your journey. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, I really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, it's been great. So thanks again for having me. Absolutely. That's, uh, and Oh, one, uh, where can people find you? I should have always. Oh, that. sure. No, it's okay. Um, really, if you just look up, um, Luke Hyde. So, um, again, by the time this podcast airs, hopefully I'll have more of this together because I really am going to try and push my own, you know, kind of personal brand this year. So Luke Hyde on YouTube, Luke Hyde on Facebook. Um, it might be something a little bit different on Instagram because Luke Hyde, unfortunately, is taken. But, <laughs> um, and then my website where you can find out more about the course and the program is LukeHyde.com as well. And Drive Digital Advertising, uh, our website is DriveDigitalAds.com. Awesome. Luke, thanks again for being on the show. That'll uh, that'll do it for this week's episode of Socialistics. Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And we will catch you next time. <laughs>